Yeah, yeah. Me again. More things to say about it. I'm trying to keep the videos somewhat short instead of a nice long diatribe, which I like, but the short ones are still needed because there's still a lot more sometimes to be said about the topic, especially when I keep thinking about it. And uh, currently it's still uh, the 14th of June, 2020. It's still Sunday morning. It's almost close to 4.30 in the morning. Give or take a few minutes. Yeah, Weaver John C., the old disgusting 54-year-old fart. You know, some people actually take advantage, uh, take that seriously enough. They call me a youngster because I call myself a 54-year-old fart and they're older than I am. I humor the old folks because I'm going to be one of those old folks in about 20 or 30 years if I live long enough. If not, I'm still a 54-year-old fart. Next to these snot-nosed kids I'm dealing with, I feel like one. After going through what's been happening in these past, this past year, it's been a nightmare. It's bad enough emotionally. I've been dealing with a hell of a lot of issues. But right now, it's just trying to deal with the issues of today. As I check through the cable channels, of different news channels, what's going on in the morning. Right now, nobody's doing late night, uh, early morning news. It's all the pre-programmed stuff. That's fine. That's fine. I really don't pay attention to that stuff in the first place. And at this point, all I keep saying on the major networks, the news networks, is more discussions with other experts concerning about what's happening these days. Discussions upon that, discussions upon that, discussions upon that, discussions. It's nice that we have the repertoire going on here with the, with the experts. It's the regular schmucks between you and me that need to have the discussions as well. We need to talk about what's going on. I have to keep my voice down because I don't want people upstairs, downstairs, or anywhere else driven crazy about my voice. Let them sleep. It's called being courteous to your neighbors. Despite the fact that I've got neighbors who are different than I am. I've got them across the ways. I've got them upstairs. I've got them behind me. I've got them up over here. I got a living over there, I got a living over there, I got a living all around here. A huge apartment complex. A melting pot. Nothing wrong with having a melting pot. We grew up under the idea of having a melting pot. Sorry, I had to adjust the camera that way. We grew up under a melting pot. We were taught that in school, at least at my age. At least in the schools I went to during a time. Back in the 70s and 80s, I was taught that America was a great big melting pot. Now we're not even that. No, we're a war zone at this point over here. A war zone, not the fight of ideas, but war zone of skin color now. And also, us versus them, police versus society. No, we can't go against police. No, we can't go against society. We can't go against this. We can't go against that. We're going against everything over here. What the hell are we doing? Hey, to tell, tell you the truth, I honestly have no clue. Absolutely no clue. Because I see people talking about the problem. Okay, we're talking about the problem. We are looking at Put this in terms that you can understand. Plumbing. A huge plumbing network of pipes and stuff. Gaskets and elbows. And snake pipes. Small pipes. Pipes of all sorts. A big, huge mechanism that has water going through it. And you've got leaks all over the damn place. 
Somebody keeps pointing to those leaks. They point, but that's all they do is just point. They, they, they're, they're doing this. Where's the duct tape? Where's the plumber's tape? Where's the sealant? Where's the crescent wrenches? Where's the pipe wrenches? Where's the plumbers? The place is falling apart. And all I keep hearing is people blaming everybody because the pipes are leaking, but they're not being repaired. Some people have gotten up to a point in their time where they're sitting on their laurels at this point over here, still doing the same thing. They want to be known. They want to be recognized. They want to be acknowledged for pointing things out to people, but they don't want to be part of the solution. They're still pointing out the problem. They're still doing the pointing at the damn plumbing. But they're not the ones trying to do the repair job. But they want people to talk about the damn thing. Meanwhile, the pressure is building to a point where we're going to be busting pipes left and right. And it's going to be too damn late. Because the pipes will be burst, the cracks will be gone. I mean, the cracks will be going all over the place. The water pressure will just burst the whole mechanism and then all hell breaks loose. It'll be too late to repair the damn thing. Meanwhile, you still get the people still pointing at the flood of water coming. Thank you for pointing out the damn problem. Now get the hell out of the way because you're a part of the problem. You're not part of the solution. You don't want to be part of the solution? Fine. You don't know what the solution is, do you? Do you care to know? Do you care to be part of it? No. You want other people to do your, your dirty work for you. You want people to be doing the work that you should have been doing a hell of a long while ago. I've seen other filmmakers that try to make the point across. Tried. At least do, they use the word tried. Other people are just too damn lazy to do so. With the racist system we've got right now as it is, we've got a flood happening at this point over here. And those people that keep pointing to the plumbing issues, certain individuals have been making themselves known in the international papers of who to blame for the damn problem. The people wanted him in the first place. The people chose this man for presidency. The first in our country over a woman. The president's name was Barack Hussein Obama. He has fought like hell to get to the position and respect he's got. But he's going to be blamed for all the racial tension from the same race that he came out of. And I'd seen the works of this guy, this accuser. He's bringing in his own way. Addressing problems is one thing. He refuses to go for the solutions. I don't see him in the damn lines. I don't see him in the, in the damn parades. I don't see him in the damn protest areas. Trying to tell people what's going on. No, he's not doing that. He wants other people to do his own work for him. Meanwhile, we're going to get more lynchings. We're going to get more lynchings at this point over here. We're going to get more protests happening over it, over the lynchings. Also, also uh, misconstrued situations that should have happened in the first place. A drunk guy who fights cops, grabs a taser, runs, gets an automatic death sentence. 
It's just watching Rodney King all over again in 1992 getting his ass beat because he's drunk and stupid and higher and shit. And the cops can't keep this guy subdued. So they got to keep beating the crap out of him, getting him brain damage. He eventually dies a few decades later. But of course, along the way, he still has problems. He was no glory boy. He was already a guy with problems anyway. Probably a criminal history. I don't know. But all I know is he had issues. And well after the Rodney King, Rodney, <laughs> right after the damn riots, he kept pleading for people to knock the shit off. Can we all get along? No, we can't get along. You kidding me? We're not done kicking each other's asses yet. We've got these pent-up, angry people, whatever kind of color they're going to be at these days, looting and raiding stores. We got them doing for this year. It doesn't matter which bit of their color. I see a store, they're going to loot the damn thing. They're going to be going through the protesters, finding their targets, and then looting. In the earlier video, I was talking about trying to talk about due process at this point over here. We don't have due process right now. We're trying to find what due process is supposed to be. It's written in the Constitution. It's written in the amendments. It's written in our laws that we have in the land. We're having a problem interpreting these laws. Are they just? Are they unjust? With the people's reaction right now, they say they're unjust. Well, you know what the legal system is. You got to pressure your damn lawmakers to change the, the change the laws. You get your attention with the protests. I can understand that. That's your constitutional right. But when the law says they've had enough, they're going to enforce the laws that they were hired to do. Protect and serve. Of course, people keep saying protect and serve the, the elitists. Of course, they're going to say something racial, say protect the whites, white privilege and all that. It's supposed to be protecting and serving the public that they are hired to do. I mean, that was the general idea when they raised their hands and swore to the Constitution of the United States to do that, right? Or did they have ulterior motives when they put on the damn badge? Meanwhile, we can't even follow our own guidelines or anything else because we're going crazy. Maybe we should have the stick instead of the carrot because the carrot's not working. But I, but once we go for the stick, we can't go back. We can't go back. Because now we're getting into the heavy-handedness of what happens. You take away our rights. You just became an autocratic society at this point over here. You've become a dictatorship. And everything we fought for, everything, our, our, our families, our previous generations fought for in wars and in conflicts across, it's all been for nothing. It's all been in vain. We can't be bothered to follow the Constitution or the laws. Everything's in vain. Freedom comes at a cost. Cost in lives. Cost in blood. So our generations to come will hopefully to enjoy it and understand it. And during the time of process, we have to give everything for it, including ourselves. And our previous generations did that. They sacrificed everything they could. It wasn't enough. We talk about fascism. We talk about communism. We talk about socialism in the political range. 
And unless they've served, and unless they've fought, they have no clue what the hell they're talking about. I have been going to college over the past five years. I have been trying to understand more and more about my country. I screwed up my chances getting out of high school and going into college. Two and a half years wasted. Diddle-dallying around. Too many heavy classes. Not enough support and also working with jobs just to keep myself supported and to keep a roof over the head. It wasn't easy. And I didn't take it seriously enough. And I screwed up. So, 30 years of working my ass off full-time jobs, left and right. Going to trade schools to learn something new, to continue education, to continue on the work, to better myself. And when my family gets in a situation where they're passing away in front of me, and I'm no longer able to work due to an accident happens. An accident, shit. Long story on that one. I go for the education so I can complete when I screwed up a long time ago. And in the process, I'm learning a hell of a lot more than what I did 30 years ago because there's a lot of things happened in that time. A lot more interpretations of the past. And I'm seeing history happening in front of my face. I'm living through history right now. Every day we live through history. But are we understanding it? Are we learning it? Is it sinking into our skulls? Is it sinking into our memories? Our understanding, our interpretations of what's going on right now? Are we not seeing cataclysmic, cataclysmic events happening that's going to be fundamentally changing us in ways we didn't want in the first place? Decisions we still have to make. And maybe if we make them, are we going to be able to take care of them this time? Because we keep saying every single time we run into situations where it threatens our constitutional rights, our due process, our freedoms. We're not learning a damn thing from our mistakes that we're making along the way. We're amplifying them. We're allowing our own anger, our own blind, our own ignorance, our own indifference towards each other, blind us. We're looking through a tunnel vision right now. We're not seeing the whole picture here. We're only seeing what we want to see at this point. We're laser focused. We're not seeing the bigger, broader picture. If we had seen it a long time ago, would we have taken the chance to do something about it? We had chances a long time ago when the Constitution was being written. It was called an imperfect document. A rush job. Because we didn't want to tick off any other states and any other colonies, actually. When we were forming the Constitution, we had the chance to end slavery. The racism would still be there, but at least we wouldn't have the slavery but it was still included in our Constitution. But we were given powers of amendments in the Constitution to update it, to change it. And it took a hell of a long day, it took a hell of a long time for that to get changed. Now we're in this situation here. Either we get off our dead asses and try to fix this damn stuff, or it's going to continue to spiral out of control and repeat itself over and over and over and over and over again. And we'll never get this damn thing done. We're going to continue to protest. We're going to continue to burn, loot, and pillage, and burn pe pirates at this point over here. Take the Constitution, burn the damn thing up, and say, okay, the United States is through. We just might as well do that right now. Take the Constitution, burn the damn thing up, and say, fuck law. You heard me. Fuck law. 
That's what we're doing right now to ourselves. Screw the damn future. Screw everybody. Fuck everybody. Lives don't matter anymore. Freedom doesn't matter anymore. The laws don't matter anymore. Everything that made us the United States of America, who was theoretically supposed to be making us into the great country. Bye. Don't let the doorknob hit you in the ass as you leave the country. Because right now we got a quagmire. We don't have a country. We have, technically speaking, we got rules and regulations, we got laws going on left and right. We don't have a country. Our people aren't united. They're divided. And as long as they're divided, as long as they're fighting against each other, we'll never be a country. We have to understand, we've got differences. Everybody's got differences. Everybody's different. Every individual is different. Every individual is unique. I don't, I don't go for this all lives matter. We have to start from a starting point and we have to expand it. We just can't be all inclusive because now we're telling us that everybody who breaks laws, their lives matter more. Privileges matter more, not the laws. Either we live in the United States of America as we were taught to believe in, or we don't. <laughs>